Hi, right then. Now, in our um, in our previous video, this is the second video of three on the skull. In our previous video, we looked around at the superior, posterior, the lateral, and the anterior views of the skull. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a brief step inside the skull, start having a look at what's going on in there, and then we'll actually then look at the inferior surface of the skull and we'll see how the two relate to each other. Okay. So that being the case, let's make a stop. If I just basically take off the roof of the skull here. And we'll place it like this, okay? And hopefully I'll be able to point everything out to you. Now, does that make most sense there? Does that sort of like, does that seem to, uh, to make sense? Yep. Okay. What we've got here, you can see here from here, here, and here, there's three major sections, okay? We've got what's called the anterior cranial fossa, the middle cranial fossa, and the posterior cranial fossa. Now, some of you guys will have been taught by D, and he has a lovely way of describing this saying that over here, this is kind of like uh, being on a penthouse, in a penthouse suite overlooking a balcony, overlooking the major city, because this is where all the busyness happens. Okay? This is where the busyness happens in the, uh, the major busyness happens in the skull. And this little area here, he describes as the slums, because this is where there's all the waste and all your drainage, by and large. Okay? So you've got your anterior, your middle, and your posterior cranial fossa, and I quite like that little description. Now, if we look closely at the anterior cranial fossa, what we have is we have the frontal bones going across the top of the skull, and they actually reach round and form the roof of the orbit. Okay, so this bit here, this is this bone here. Okay, can you see that? Okay, that's the frontal bone reaching round here and forming this roof. Okay, and it fuses its suture line here with, we met it before, the massive sphenoid bone. Okay. So this is the sphenoid bone all the way across here in the middle cranial fossa. Now we'll just take a step back here and we'll sort of notice this bone here, okay? This is the ethmoid, okay? This is the ethmoid bone between uh, the frontal bones. And this projection here is called the cristagalli. The cristagalli is the anchoring point for one of the uh, meningeal partitions of the skull, uh, the false uh, cerebri. And just here we can see all of these little... Uh, little um, holes and this is the cribriform plate. And what sits here on each side right and left this is the olfactory bulbs which uh, which have um, uh, smell sensation, um, um, little fibers of smell sensation which are going into the nose here. Okay, And so air that comes through, pick the, uh, the sensation is picked up and sent through the olfactory nerve back to the brain. We also have uh, our Clinoid processes. Okay, these are the anterior clinoid processes, and if we um, if we look, they just are opposite the posterior clinoid processes. And this little area here is called the cella turcica. Okay, which means the Turkish saddle because it was meant to look a bit like the types of saddle that uh, ancient Turks uh, rode on. And they are uh, uh, the boundaries um, for this little area here is called the height. Um, the uh, pituitary fossa, and in here lies the pituitary gland with its pituitary stalk heading up to the hypothalamus of the brain. Okay, so that's the anterior cranial fossa and a little bit of the middle cranial fossa. Now, if we go more um, in more detail of the uh, looking at the uh, middle cranial fossa, we'll see that there's actually quite a lot going on. Okay, and there's, this is where we start seeing there's a lot of uh, foramina which are uh, allowing structures to pass through uh, from one side of uh, from the inside of the skull to the outside. Okay, so the first one that we're going to have a look at, okay, is this one here. Right, so this here, can you see it? Just bound, okay, in the sphenoid bone, okay, bound by the anti uh, the anterior clinoid process. Okay, this here is the optic canal. Okay. And sitting just above it, okay, the optic nerve goes through here, and uh, although I'm not going to talk much about what's going through, we'll do that in the next video, uh, I'll just mention that you've got a little area called where the optic nerves cross called the optic chiasm, just sitting just here above the pituitary gland. Okay? So, this is the optic canal, and if we look at the front, you can hopefully see through there where the, um, uh, where the optic nerve uh, enters into the orbit. Yeah? So, that's the optic canal. Now, if we go back around here, okay, we'll have another look around here. And what we have, okay, again, it's a little bit awkward to actually show it to you, and hopefully I can get, uh, uh, you can make this out. But what you can see is there's this lovely little crescent of foramina and fishes, which uh, are openings of the inside of the skull to the outside, and vice versa. Now, the one that we can see here, okay, this is the superior orbital fissure. Okay, so this is also coming out into the orbit, and you can imagine that because it's quite big, that means quite a lot of structures are going to pass through it. Okay, and so we'll come to them in a short while.
and that's the superior orbital fissure. Now if we go back around here, okay, and I'll keep sort of doing this trying to show you where structures are passing, this very round foramen here is called foramen rotundum, so that makes sense, doesn't it? The rotund foramen, okay, and that's just sitting there. Behind it is a much more oval shaped one, so it makes absolute sense that this is called foramen ovale, and we can see foramen ovale on the inferior surface of the skull. Okay, so that's foramen ovale there. Now, just behind foramen ovale, separated by, it's actually even more obvious on the inferior surface, but separated by a small spine of bone, is foramen spinosum. Okay, makes sense. The, um, okay, and that's it coming out onto the inferior surface of the skull there. Can you see that? Nope, got it. Lovely. So that's foramen spinosum, with a little spine of bone separating it from foramen ovale just in front of it. Okay. Now, next to these is a quite jagged foramen. Okay. Now this here is called foramen lacerum. It's got an, uh, a, uh, an edge which is quite lacerated and quite sharp. And not very many structures pass through this because if they did, then, uh, then they get um, torn by the rough edges of it. Okay. So it's called foramen lacerum and it's actually largely covered by membrane. Um, in uh, in the skull, but you can see it on the other side, and that's where it lies. Sorry, do you want to see that again? Can you see that? Lovely. Okay. Now, just behind here, however, okay, what we do see is what's called. Now, I'll just try and see if I can get you into an angle where you can see it. So that was foramen lacerum there, but just behind this, a very acute angle is the carotid canal, okay? Now if I try and put this through here, okay, this is where the internal carotid artery enters into the skull here, okay, just behind there. Now it's actually on the inferior surface of the skull, it looks a lot further back, okay, because actually that canal is um, angling, if it comes up through here, it angles very heavily that way, okay? So that's the carotid canal there, okay? But what's nearby, okay, on the inferior surface, but not nearby on the uh, inside surface, it's the jugular foramen, okay? So this here is the jugular foramen. You see that? In the posterior cranial fossa. But if you look at it from this angle, the jugular foramen and the carotid canal that we just saw are actually quite close together because in the neck, the, the, uh, the internal jugular vein and the common, uh, common carotid artery uh, travel very close together in a sheath with the vagus nerve, okay? So, that's the jugular foramen. Now this here, we, came to, we saw this briefly before, this massive chunk of bone. This is part of the temporal bone, okay? This is called the petrous temporal bone, okay? We saw the squamous part, which is extending here, okay? So this is the squamous part there. But inside, this is the petrous temporal bone, and it has a lot of the uh, acoustic apparatus, the auditory apparatus, okay? And we can see here the internal auditory meatus, okay? And we, saw, we noticed before the external auditory meatus across here, but this is the internal auditory meatus, okay? Um, right, now we've mentioned so far, we've mentioned the jugular foramen just behind there, we mentioned the carotid canal, foramen lacerum. If we keep going backwards, just behind, we, so we've just seen the internal auditory meatus, we saw the jugular foramen just there. If we keep going back, this is just called the condylar canal, this little, uh, this little uh, bit here, okay? And that just carries some emissary veins, so it's not, uh, not got anything hugely vital in it. But in here, okay, in here, can you see that? Can I turn that for you a little bit more? Is that a little bit better? Okay. This here is the hypoglossal canal. It might be easier if I show you on the other uh, on the other side of this. I'm not quite sure. I'll tell you what. I'll show you on the inferior surface. Okay. Can you see that there? That's the hypoglossal canal. Can you see it? Okay. And if we go back inside, that's what I was trying to show you. Can you see that properly? Okay, so that's the hypoglossal canal, and of course, in fact, um, here's me not mentioning this absolutely enormous foramen, okay, called foramen magnum, okay, foramen magnum, foramen big, okay, and this is what's holding the, uh, what's allowing the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, this is the brain forming the spinal cord and traveling, um, traveling down to the rest of the body, okay. Um, now, there's one other feature I want to point out in here, and then we'll go to the inferior side of the, of the skull. And we've actually seen a lot of the features of the inferior side already through, through going back and forth. But there's one that I would like to point out. Okay? This groove here is uh, uh, created on the 
uh, on the inside of the skull. Okay, and this I really like this because sometimes when you forget, well, especially when you're in exams as well, and you forget exactly you know what's what and where what goes where. This groove here is I mentioned before the perion. Okay, this is the middle meningeal artery. Okay, this is the one get, that gets damaged if the perion is um, is uh, is uh, fractured. Okay, and you can see where it actually enters into the skull. Okay, because it actually tells you on the skull. Okay, if you follow this line down, it goes over. What's that? Foramen spinosum with a valle just in front of it. Okay, so what travels through foramen spinosum is the middle meningeal artery, and it's nicely demonstrated on the skull. You can see it. You don't need to just remember this. You can actually see it there. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that's probably the majority of what we need to see on the inside of the skull. We'll just quickly head over to the underside of the skull. Okay, now if we look across here, what we have. I'm just going to grab my forceps. This is the palate, okay? So in fact, I'll just point out, we'll just orientate you a little bit. That's the front of the skull. And now we're looking at the undersurface, okay? Now, this here is the palate, okay? And this is made mostly of the maxilla. So this is the maxilla extending back, okay? So that's the majority of the palate. But right at the back, that bit there is made by a bone called the palatine bone, which makes sense, doesn't it? Now, you've got the incisal foramen here carrying nerves and vessels. Oh, would you like me? There. So you've got the incisal foramen there, and back here we've got the greater and two lesser palatine foramen. Okay, so greater palatine foramen, lesser palatine foramen. Okay, sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two. So that's the palate, and if we keep looking across here, we have these two big projections. These plates are the lateral and the medial pterygoid plates. Okay which are actually projections down of the sphenoid bone. So once again, it's sometimes difficult to understand this unless you get orientated, but we met the sphenoid bone across, I'll show you actually this side, which isn't coloured. That's the sphenoid bone there, which is still extending downwards here. So this is the lateral pterygoid plate, that's the medial pterygoid plate. Okay. Um, what you can see here is a little dotted line, which is just meant to, uh, to demarcate where parts of the pharynx are situated. It's the pharyngeal tubercle, where the superior constrictor attaches. Okay. And what we saw before was a few foramina, okay? So this is, um, we saw the superior, um, sorry, uh, we saw foramen ovale, sorry. We saw um, uh, foramen spinosum. We saw the carotid canal. We saw foramen lacerum, okay? And this is the jugular foramen, okay? So we've seen all of these just before, okay? Can you see that? Sorry. Can you see that properly? Now, we also saw foramen magnum here with the hyperglossal canal just inside the condyles. Can you see that? Yeah. And here we do, uh, we have these huge, huge masses, the occipital condyles, okay? The occipital condyles are basically taking the weight of the skull and it's sitting on the, uh, on the atlas, okay, the C1 vertebra, okay? So this is, all of this weight of the skull, and it's quite heavy actually, is transmitted through the vertebral column, through these occipital condyles, down into the vertebral column. Okay, and the only other bits and pieces that I want to point out to you, we saw before the mastoid process. This is the styloid process, okay, like a stylus. You know, remember, like you know, if you're if you're uh, if you're thinking old school and you sort of remember the stylus of a of a um, of a record. Okay, um, this is the styloid process, and this is the stylo mastoid foramen. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that that covers the majority of the features of the base of the skull. So hopefully you've got an idea of the internal uh, internal surface of the skull and the inferior surface of the skull. And what we'll do in the next video is we're just going to hammer home exactly what is going through through these uh, these foramina. Okay? So so far we've got the entire external surface of the skull and we've got the inside and the underside and we've started to see the various uh, the various holes and uh, that's, that allow uh, structures to throw hair through. In the next video, we'll start to look at them in a little more detail.